You're listening to a podcast from the Finnish Football Show. Yes, it's the Finnish Football Show. Uh, my name's Rich Nelson, standing in for producer Mark yet again. He's off gallivanting and losing weight and being doing his like rocky training montage. Uh, I'm joined this week again by Keke. Hello, Keke. Terve. And the uh, newlywed himself, Mr. Ali Manson. Hello, Ali. Moi. Uh, let's just say, uh, I think you're obviously feeling left out. It was The whole tagline was... Uh, English or British men with Finnish wives, and you felt like you had to step up and really join the crew and do it properly. Yeah, that that, that was that that was pretty much all, all I had left to conquer. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> He's one of us now. Okay, yeah, cool. absolutely. Yeah, That's it. Yeah, full motivation <laughs> for tying the knot to uh, exactly. fit, yeah. fit in properly with a Finnish football show. <laughs> yeah, she she did accept that reason as well. So that was good honour, quality. <laughs> yeah. 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 Will you take my Finnish football show membership? There you go. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. On exit all record, mate. There. Ah, uh, kiitos. Right. Well, um, so it's been it's a couple of weeks since our last uh, our last yeah. pod, and we did it. Uh, oh, you could just wrapped up the the Vegas Liga title, but there was still uh, a few bits and bobs to sort out the promotion, the the Euro playoffs. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk mainly about the end of domestic football in uh, in Finland for the year. Uh, a couple of little bits. There's, as always, there's little snippets. There's a Helmerit squad for a couple of games coming up. Huki are playing in a couple of weeks as well. And uh, yeah, we'll have a general chat. But, um, but yeah, Ali, seeing as, as you're with us and you're now fully in the in the cult, you've drank the Kool Aid. Um, Hoiko, champions of Finland. Um, you, you weren't with us last time, so uh, why don't you give us a little summary as a Hoiko fan? He says I'm wearing a Hoiko shirt today, which I feel a bit dirty in. But uh, yeah, <laughs> T- tell us how the year was for you, lot. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously the, the season started a little bit slowly for for Hoiko, but I think you can also say that coupes were were brilliant, and maybe after the first sort of yeah six or seven match days, we were thinking, oh, this could go right down to the wire. It nearly did. We we nearly got that that title race that um that everyone wanted um well except I guess maybe most Hoyakor fans <laughs> and uh, yeah certainly my my blood pressure was eased on the uh, penultimate day of um uh, penultimate match day of the season I, I think on reflection it was it was good um but the the thing that I was I was thinking about and I think we spoke about it a few weeks ago was the Top lead score, uh, um, league score was um, uh, Radulovic on eight, which you, you wouldn't necessarily associate those numbers with the team that wins the league title. Um, I mean, Lee Owen couldn't stop scoring. Um, you know, I don't know what his plans are for next season, but there's definitely <laughs> there, there's definitely a spot <laughs> vacant uh, in the capital if they can get the numbers right. Although I'm sure he'd. You know, maybe he fancies going back to to Scotland and and uh, trying it out over there. But I think all, all in all, the thing the thing that impressed me was uh, not only the, the the comebacks and the solidity at the back. I, I know they're not always facing hot shot strikers, but it it does seem to me that there is a style there. There's a style that has been building for a few years now. Um, and I think even though the the European games, which I'm sure we'll speak about in, in a little bit more detail later on, um, even though the results aren't so good, the performances definitely are, you know, uh, worth writing about, that's for sure. Yeah, and um, I mean, it would be remiss to, to forget to mention that that final round of the season uh, ended with Cups beating Hoyko in their own backyard 1-0. Obviously, the, the title already gone, and, and I guess the history books will reflect that it was only one point difference in the end. But, um, but yeah, it's, uh, when you look at it, really, and, and, and after the start, and Cups were on that unbeaten run that stretched over a year. Um, and I, I did gloss over Cups uh, in, in the last sort of review of the season, and, and we did kind of, we joked in our WhatsApp group and on previous pods around what, what's happened there. Um, I mean, and 
the second half of the season all gone downhill really, but Hoyko went on some fantastic runs and and yes, we, we've joked about the size of the squad and the fact that the richest club in Finland with the biggest squad and all those international or ex-internationals in there has, has really stretched. But um, I mean, Keke, again, after what we talked about before, um, where do you see this Hoyko with another group stage wallet going in their coffers going for next season? I mean, it's as you say, they're they're gonna they're gonna earn a few quid from their uh, their Europa League jaunt, and um, and it's only gonna send them from strength to strength, isn't it? Like um, you know, uh, Ali was just mentioned there, purely tongue in cheek, you know, that there's a there's a place for Leo in in, um, in Helsinki, but it's not beyond the realms of possibility. They've got you know he, he's proved what he can do in this league. They've got they've got cash to splash, so. Um, you know, it's uh, it's who, who would be surprised to see him pop up in the blue and white stripes? It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be, you know, something out of out of fairy tale, would it? It would. Um, it's it's more than a distinct possibility. But yeah, I mean, for for me, I, I was really I was really hoping for the title decider, and, and we we very nearly got it. But um, but yeah, you know, the um, the financial might came came to the top in the end, and and as I say, with with another little group stage payout coming their way it's um it's hard to it's hard to see how our other clubs are going to sort of mount another challenge i'm sure they'll they'll give it another go especially your mob rich old coops they'll um they'll do their best to to give it another go but i do think i think with the with the start that hoy core had it's it, it this season may have been an opportunity missed for some yeah, um, and and Hoyko have already started strengthening for next year. They uh, today they they confirmed the signing of Alexi Panin from Inter. Um, I think he's he's twenty eight, but he's one of those very solid Veikkaus Liga players. He's Finnish and homegrown, so obviously for let's be honest, for quota purposes, he's he's ideal really, and uh, and should give a bit of strength. I mean, we we've talked before about some of the young players that they've had. Um, Vanen and has been quite impressive when I've seen him this year. Uh, Terho is moving to Belgium. But yeah, I think um, you definitely think that, that the striker is where they need. I mean, I, I'm not going to compare them to Man City, but it's like when you look at Manchester City and they have all this glorious football and now they've signed a centre forward. Yeah. And you look at Hojko and, and when Radulovic has scored eight and the, the wonderful signing of Malik uh, with his one league goal in God knows how many games. Um, it's... Um, it's a bit of a strange situation to be in, but yeah, they've been sharing the goals around and players like Hostica and Olasanya have been weighing in. It's um, for, for that, from that point of view, it's, it's good. And, and yeah, back in the Champions League next season and maybe they can sort of take that next step. The, the, the midfield is the thing that impressed me as well. I, I did touch on the defence being, you know, fairly solid. It sort of doesn't really matter who, who plays, but I think, I mean, bringing Lingman back was a really, really <laughs> good decision. Um, every time I see him play, he always seems that he, you know, is class. And yeah, as you mentioned, Bannon as well, David Brown, always seem to be solid eight out of tens whenever I see them live. So um, yeah, they've got two two thirds or, you know, uh, at least up to the end part of the pitch, pretty right. It's just that that final piece of the jigsaw that they're missing. Um, you mentioned David Brown there, and, and Keke, I'll, I'll ask you about this. We uh, Last week, as we were recording, Hoiko lost at home to Roma, and, uh, and with the score at 2-1 to Roma, David Brown scored what can only be described as an absolute worldie. It was. It was, oh, it was a worldie. I mean, like, what? first of all, what a goal. What an absolute banger of a goal. And then, second of all, I mean... Um, well, it, it was chalked off for, for I don't know what, like what, what a foul in the build-up or something. I did, but what what are they talking about? I mean, when you score a goal like that, whether there's whatever's happened in the build-up, that VAR just needs to go home and forget about it, or the geezer just needs to stand up and applaud, doesn't he? Because how you can, I mean, first of all, who are you core against the giants of Roma? And, you know, an absolute banger to equalise it to all with something like 10 minutes to go, I think it was. And then and then they, they rule it out for, I mean, I still, I still can't tell you why it was chalked off. Um, everyone, everyone in the stadium was, well, I mean, 
we'd probably witnessed what we thought was yeah an equalizer and around about the 80th minute 81st minute I think it was well, probably the best goal I've ever seen live <laughs> yeah. I, I was right behind it as well the stadium went absolutely you know mad and then as what happens with VAR you have that minute of uncertainty uh the referee goes over to the monitor he then like books Rui Patricio the Roma goalkeeper so we're thinking what well, hold on is it gonna stand but then of course he does um rule it out for again yeah like you said Keke I've absolutely no I, I, I must have watched it back 20 times I'm not exaggerating different mm. clips whether it was from UEFA TV or the Hoya or Instagram channel I've tried to find any angle that I possibly can to see whether it should have been disallowed and I, I still come to the same conclusion no I think what I and again this this is what was shared was that essentially um, Malik wafted his hand towards I think it was Cristante the the Roma defender and he went down like he'd been shot the the infamous Helsinki yeah. sniper was in action again and this was bef- as the ball was getting cleared out to, towards Brown and it's just one of these and and, and we talked about it before around. Finnish clubs in Europe and how sometimes they they look like when they're playing against these sides from from Eastern Europe or in this case a team managed by Jose Mourinho, a team that masters the dark arts as it were. They, they the Finnish team suddenly look very naive. Yeah, and I know this can happen a lot, but you know that goal was ruled out for essentially nothing because yeah. this happens a hundred times a game and nothing happens. And it wasn't even a clear and obvious error. I, I don't know where that came from. So it was one of the harshest VAR decisions we've had. And that's a, a very, very long list. Cruel. Absolutely. You know, that's all you can say about it. It was cruel. Mm. But um, yeah, I just want to say, just touching on Hoyiko again, you know, um, mentioned the, the the midfield, mentioned the stingy defence. But I think we we got to give a bit of kudos to the keeper as well. You know, young young Connor Hazard on loan from Celtic, I believe, Northern Ireland International. Um, I mean, he, he uh, I, I think we we took the mick out of him a little bit. He 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 dropped a couple of clangers, didn't he, earlier in the season? But um, but he's he's after that, he's been absolutely absolutely solid. He's he's been he's been fantastic. So you know, I don't know what, what his plans are. If he'll be sticking around, or or if he's or if he's going back to to Scotland to try his try his arm there but he's he's been he's been brilliant between the sticks as well yeah he, he's a really good shot stopper as well and I think you're right that throughout the season he's really grown into being a number one goalkeeper which I guess was the reason why Celtic wanted to give him this experience abroad you know go somewhere play football play every week mm-hmm. um and you know he's good with his feet he's talking to his defense all the time I think he has a, a really really bright future and it's always quite nice when um yeah a, f- a fellow fellow brit or uh irish player is you know playing in finland you sort of you always want them to do to do well and i think he can really look back on this season uh, and go yeah i i did a pre- pretty good job in uh, uh at hoyako well he might um he might be seeing some of his old mates um wherever he ends up because obviously finland have drawn northern ireland in the uh in the qualifiers so um yeah that'd be exciting well, he was on the bench for the, uh, I think, Northern Ireland's last game. So I, I don't really follow them enough, but you'd imagine he'll be in the squad at least. And I mean, Hoyko would do well to get him back for another year, uh, although they have loaned uh, Elmo Henriksen back to Maryham for another season. Uh, he did fairly well for them this year. So, um, I mean, if, if he doesn't come back, they'll definitely be looking for a number one. Uh, but I think he, he he's going to get, as you say, regular game time there and, I mean, is he going to get in the Celtic team? Mm, I don't know. Well, I don't know. Tonight they could have done with him. Last time I checked, they were losing 5-0 to Real Madrid. So, um, I mean, by, by, by the time this uh, this podcast goes out, um, yeah, 5-0 might seem uh, might seem quite nice. So, uh... <laughs> well, There's quite a large Finnish contingent there by all accounts. I think um, my cousin-in-law, is that a word? He's, uh, he's gone to that game en route to Seville for the uh, Hoigo game. Ah, so um, nice. yeah, he managed to snag tickets for the Bernabeu, so uh, done quite well. Obviously, time of re- I, I imagine this will probably go out after the Hoiko game, but uh, Hoiko in action against Real Betis in uh, match day six on Thursday night. They were only eliminated last week um, after the fifth game, but um, I mean, it's, it's been an experience for them. Obviously, we've, we've talked about how much money they're going to make, but in terms of 
but in a very tough group, I mean, Betis and Boma and, and Ludogorets have done well as well. I think they're actually second as it stands. But, I mean, they, they've learned a lot from this. And I think some of those players will get some experience that they just will not get in domestic football. Yeah, absolutely. It definitely feels like um, they raised their game as well for uh, for the European Games, which, you know, you might have to have a little look at the mentality of the players. You know, can they get themselves, you know, you know, G'd up for a cold Wednesday night in, you know, in Lati. Maybe they st- still should. But, um, <laughs> of course, it's, it is also quite nice that they, you know, are able to, you know, go toe to toe against these teams because, you know, there hasn't been, again, at, you know, time of recording, um, going to Betis is a hard game. But, you know, they haven't, you know, been on the wrong end of a, of a walloping. You know, it's only been, you know, the odd goal, apart from a, obviously Luda Goretz, uh, away and, and Roma away were, I guess, you know, harsh lessons. But, uh, you know, as we spoke about with the Roma one, when they were away, they could have been 1 0 up at half time. So, um, yeah, as you said, Rich, a really good uh, experience for them. And, yeah, hopefully uh, some of those players will go from strength to strength now. Like, like we said, I mean, that is a that is a tough group. I mean, when 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 it was first drawn, you know, it was. Uh, I remember Ali saying, "Oh, oh, well, you know, we've got this mob Luda Goretz in there, so surely we got a chance." And then, and then what happened? We realised they were actually quite good. But um, but yeah, I mean, Hoyi Court, despite only taking one point so far from from the group, I mean it. When you actually watch the games, obviously we've spoken about the cruel sell, sending off as well that they had, but we. Um, They've sort of more than more than held their own, haven't they? They've they've give it a go. They've they've been in the game sort of right up to the sort of hour mark and all that. So um, so yeah, I think they'll they'll certainly be able to take positives from this whole experience. Yeah, and uh, I say they they sort of uh, work to do for next year, and uh, yeah, possibly a new goalkeeper and almost certainly a new centre forward. But uh, as we joked off there, I think I've scored more goals for them this year than Malik. So uh, yes, he can go back to Malmo with his head held low. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad I got him on the back of my shirt, but I didn't have any choice. Yeah, one leg available. So. That, was prob- that was probably the only shirt they had left. So uh. yeah, uh, they were going to wash the team bus with it. I think afterwards. But, yeah. <laughs> um, now, obviously, since um, since we last spoke, we've had the uh, this this that season just did not want to end, did it? We had the uh, wow the, the Vakas Liga European playoff in all its glory. <laughs> we had. The teams finishing f- uh, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth, playing off for the chance to play the team that finished fourth. And after all that fiasco, the team that finished fourth qualified for Europe. Through, yeah. <laughs> oh man, there was some there, there was some half decent games. There were plenty of goals yeah. across those um, across those little playoff games, weren't there? I mean, right up until um, right up until the the playoff fi- the playoff final. The, the, the two-legged playoff final with Vapes and um, and Hacker there. There was uh, there was plenty of goals. So yeah, I mean it it kept the old season rumbling on, kept us uh, kept us interested. But yeah, yeah. Congratulations to uh, FC Hacker who go into what are they going to reach the first qualifying round of the Europa Conference League? Yeah, so they end up in the same pot. Oh, I, I assume they won't be seeded, but they're, yeah, they go in with Coops and Honka into that next season. Um, it was a strange one, was it? Because we had, um, they didn't, and they ended up having basically a two week holiday. And uh, <laughs> you had Asi Kord Inter, who came fifth and sixth, were at home to VPS and Olu, and they both lost, both lost at home. Yeah. To the, and then this, is, this just shows momentum, really, doesn't it? Because those two teams had a pretty rough end of the season, uh, bottom of the championship group, as it were. And you had a VPS and Ola who were the top of the bottom half yeah. of the relegation group, and they went into it on in really good form. So, and VPS went to Inter and absolutely battered them. So, um, and then yeah, then they played. So you've got for a playoff place, you had the two teams that came seventh and eighth, and then um, yeah, the uh, VPS went through and played two legs against Hacker, and that that was over really in the, the first half of the first game. Lee Irwin again, that man yeah. with that fir- first half hat trick. So. Um, yeah, yeah I, uh, I, 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 had to check. I had to check today because I thought I, and I must have yeah, dreamt it uh, that Lee Owen had scored the perfect hat trick in that first half, but he hadn't. It was too right footed and a header, but um, in, yeah, he just can't get the strikers these days. Yeah, come on, Owen, <laughs> sort it out. 
20 goals, bloody hell. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, it looks like he's off. I mean, again, I, I, it sounds like uh, he was linked. And again, this, this wasn't legit, but it linked with uh, Preston and I think it was Hull in England. But 10, he's had offers from 10 different countries wow. so far. He's now a free agent. And uh, I think, yes, this has been a, a nice little year for him, keep his eye in. But uh, yeah, like, I mean, we, we jested earlier that perhaps Hoyko might come in for him. I mean, he, he could do a lot worse. But uh, yes, we, we shall see. And um, yeah, we also had the relegation or promotion playoff with uh, another convoluted system. Uh, we ended up with two legs of Lati v TPS, which Lati won in extra time in the second leg and remain in the top division again. Come on, get the, enthe- get the enthusiasm back, Rich. Come oh, on. Oh, not for Lati. <laughs> not for Lati. Come on. Get a nice shirt and that was it. <laughs> Poor old, uh, poor old TPS. They seem to have been trying to get into the Bakehouse League for donkeys years and not quite, not quite managing it. Yeah, I think this was the sixth year in seven. I think they've been involved in the playoff, <laughs> the playoff as, yeah. as, e- as either the top or the lower side. Yeah, uh, but they sacked um, Jonathan Johansson. I think just before the end of the season. Um, I mean, he, it was quite clear he hadn't got the best out of the team. But yeah, I think they sacked him. I think it was the penultimate round of games. After that, he went and he's uh, he's already back in Scotland, living the high life with his lovely TV presenting missus. And um, there you go. why not? <laughs> How do you ever half live, eh? And uh, yeah, so we're stuck with sorry, um, Larty remain in the Vegas <laughs> League for, for another year, and um, TPS has gone. And uh, Yarrow, who was one of the teams that lost to uh, to TPS, they, they um, their manager Jimmy Wah has left off. I think he spent thirty years in various roles with Yarrow. And he left today and he's gone to become the assistant at Mariham. There you so, go. Uh, yeah. uh, news on the door for you there. Um, right, well, that's um, that's the, kind of the end of the Vegas League season. Um, now, Ali, you've spoken previously about you wanted to highlight a few of the players who've kind of stood out for you over the over the season so far. Is it, are there any other names other than those that we've chucked out liberally that uh, have caught your eye? Uh, I mean, uh, the... The guy from Hacker that we've been talking about, Leo, and uh, no, no surprise there. I, I also do want to put a, a little shout out to um, uh, the VPS striker Tete Yengi. Um, he's Australian. He, he's actually on loan from Ipswich under 23s, not even from their uh, first team. Um, and seven goals, 11 assists is a pretty decent return for a guy still, you know learning how to play at a, a, a decent professional level. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to give a, a, a shout out to him as well, because, I mean, other than the, the the obvious culprit that is, yeah, Leo, and we also touched on uh, Connor Hazard as well, or Hazard as a BT <laughs> Sport will continually uh, <laughs> call him, despite oh. not realising that he is, in fact, from Northern Ireland. But <laughs> there we go. Um yeah, I, I also wanted to give a, a shout out to Yengi as well because I think those um, those stats are a really decent return for someone. Um, yeah, who has essentially been playing reserve football his um, up until now. So yeah, hats off to him. Yeah, that that VPS team it was um, very front loaded and and one of the uh, the big threats was Kalle Multanen who has kind of been bobbing around. I mean, he was always seen as kind of the best striker in the second tier for most of his career and then he's come up this time and scored 15 in 30 games which uh, I think he's 33 and he's fine it's one of these like he's finally made that step up I think it was maybe 10 15 years ago there were a couple of Italian strikers who kind of waited until they hit their early to mid 30s before hitting a goal scoring form so he's done well he's earned himself a new two-year contract so uh, fair play to him yeah, the, 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 I mean, it's obvious to say, but, you know, when you look at the, the top scorer list, but, um, but yeah, Agon Sadiku, who's, who's, who's only, is he 20 or 19 or, or only 19, I think. I mean, um, he's had a cracking season. We've, we spoke about how it was exciting to see Honka at the, at the right end of the table, you know, like um, sort of even, even at the start of the season being mentioned as as possible title contenders or at least pushing in that direction and yeah Sadiq who chipped in I think it was 14 odd goals so um yeah 14 or 15 goals so uh yeah you know give a give a little shout out to 
to him at, at 19 years old, he's um, going in the right direction. Yeah, well, I, I guess this is a sort of nice little place to leave it. I guess with Foyko still one game left of, of 2022. And then I think what's been described as the longest pre-season in world football, as we wait now for five months, over five months until the next League <laughs> Liga season yeah. begins anyway. Um, we've got the Liga Cup will be starting in probably early February. Uh, the Swarman Cup will be back. It's, um, it's a bit of a long wait and the World Cup coming kind of just, it's just random timing really. But yeah, it's nice that after, it's felt like a long season, but it felt very much like it's been back after a couple of years with, with COVID where it's been curtailed or, or certain mm. things haven't happened, whether it's the final rounds of the Europa, the Europa Games. And yeah, I think generally it was a, all around not a bad season. What do you think? Decent. Yep. Yeah, Success. Really yes. Well, um, I guess it's that time of the pod when producer Mark, when he does his editing and I know he'll get his little sound effects in there, he'll be demanding plugs everything from merchandise to our other social media channels. So, uh, Keke, talk about our Instagram channel. Yeah, so um, you can follow us over on Instagram. It's um, finish underscore football underscore show. And, um, yeah, we're, <coughs> excuse me, pretty um, pretty active over there with the all the latest news from mostly the uh, the Hawkeye and Helmerit players and what they're up to in their, their various clubs. And, um, and, yeah, news from... Finish football and yeah, would like to uh, post some pretty pictures on there. So give us give us a follow over there on Instagram. And what are we on? We're we're on almost seven hundred and fifty followers over there now. So um, growing all the time. And yeah, it's uh, it's a good place, good place to interact with us. So um, yeah, give us give us a follow. Yeah, and that, that links in with our Facebook group as well. I think the, the it pictures does, from yeah. there pop up. Yeah. They do. Got, yeah, it's, it's, all, it's all, all that systems thing. going. And uh, we've got our YouTube channel as well where. This podcast and all our previous episodes and interviews live, which uh, yeah, is always a, a nice little place. I know that, that seems to be quite popular. I think the, the subtitle feature is um, yeah. <laughs> it's made life a bit easier for some people, isn't it? So. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, don't know if they. Yeah, do they? Uh, do people need subtitles for Southeast London? I don't know. It's um, <laughs> yeah. I was going to say I, I, I'm a trained actor. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't all go to Rada, Ali. <laughs> Um, and also we've got the, uh, the tea public, the Finnish football show t-shirt shop, which is usually got some sort of sale on. I mean, even as I'm looking at it now, 35, 30, 30, a massive 35% off oh, your Finnish pra- football show t-shirts. Practically so giving it away. They are. So get yourself over to tpublic.com, type in Finnish football show and a plethora of cracking designs will, will pop up. Um, yeah, we've also got, which I need to dig out the link for, um, got a site for mugs and stickers with the same designs. I need to get the uh, the, the new ones off you. But yeah, the, uh, and, well, these are the 2022 ones, aren't they? We're going to have some new ones. We will for next so, season. Yeah, because yeah, I think we're in that unique position where we're looking at 12 teams from 12 different cities next season. So uh, Wonderful. Yes. yes, watch this space. Indeed. Yes, but um, okay, we will uh, put our shekels away and stop haggling and demanding your cash. Not that we do any of this for free because we love you. Um, now, we also for this week are going to talk a little bit about the upcoming Helmerit games, the uh, the squad for which was announced today. Uh, Keke, you're normally all over this. What was uh, what's the latest squad looking like? There's well, there's there's quite a few new faces actually. Um, it's uh, Obviously, we've had some we've had some high profile retirements recently, and uh, the latest of which is uh, Tuija Hurunen, who's um, retired from from football completely after after a number of years. Um, she had an absolutely fantastic career, majority of which was spent in Italy with Juventus, winning I don't know how many Scudettis was it? Five in a row. Hmm. Yeah, five 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 in a row. Not bad, but. Um, yeah, so she's she's hung up her boots. I think she said she'd been playing professionally for something like, what was it, 15 years or whatever. She's won 16 trophies, been involved with the, the Helmerit national team for, you know, the, all of those 15 years. So, so yeah, um, big boots to fill. But, um, so, yeah, enjoy your, enjoy your retirement, Toya. But um, 
but yeah, so the the Helmerich squad, that, as I say, there's there's a few a few new faces. You've got goalkeepers, obviously Tini Korpla. You've got Anna Tamminen from uh, from Hamabu, and then you've got um, Maya Sari, who also plays in Sweden with uh, AIK. Um, so yeah, uh, Katarina Talaslatin misses out. I don't know what the um, what the crack is there. Whether it's just a bit of um, bit of squad rotation or whatever. But um, but yeah, they're the they're the three goalkeepers. Then you got Eli Pikuyamsa, Natalia Kuika, who's just picked up a um, NSAWL Championship medal with um, Portland Portland Thorns. So um, yeah, they've won they've won the uh, the North American Women's Soccer League Championship, and uh, Natalia Kuika had a um, had a decent season over there. So um, yeah, she's in the squad, and then then we've got. Um, this is terrible. I don't even know her first name. Then we've got Peltonen, who, um, who I'll have to do a bit of research on, I'm afraid. Tia. Uh, t- 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 there we go. Thank you, Rich. So, um, yeah, I mean, um, a, a, a newbie there coming in. Then you've got Emma Coivisto, who's at Liverpool now. Um, Ava Neustrom from Hamabu. Who else have we got? And then another two, uh, Tunila and Letola, make up the um, defenders. So, yeah, a couple of... Uh, couple of new faces in there to keep an eye on yeah I think I mean these are two games we've got well one official game and one behind closed doors since you're glamorized friendly uh, against Wales in Spain so it's a nice little nice little training camp for them and I think I, I'm not sure exactly where this sits in the the women's calendar and I don't know why that's why maybe a couple of the players are, are missing out but uh, you know we're, we're deep into the the Champions League as well but um but yeah I mean it's it's, it's fairly strong but like you said, the, the squad looks different now that yeah. you know so some of these some of these players have, have packed it in. And you know, I mean, Linda Selstrom, I think they'll have to drag her out <laughs> by the time she's finished. But uh, she's clearly looking to extend her goal scoring record. But um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. And um, I think the games are on the twelfth and fifteenth of November, which will be on Ule. Well, I think that the first one will be anyway. So uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, yeah, it's nice to see some new faces. I think there's uh, several. Cancelling and Liga players yeah. making or getting their, their first call ups anyway, and again, we're still waiting for a permanent coach, um, aren't we? Because I think uh, they, they, after um, Anna Signal left after the uh, the Euros, and mm-hmm. uh, Marco Salaranta was the under seventeen coach that took him to I think one of the I think to take him to the World Cup, the under seventeen World Championships. Um, he's the sort of caretaker, and I don't know if he's a front runner or, or not for the main job. But uh, yeah, definitely bringing in a lot of new players, and and, and that reward that we talked about um, before that there wasn't a lot of new faces in that squad over the the previous regimes. Yeah. It's nice that he's he's really giving some of those domestic based players, and I'm not just saying he's got three cups players in there because they again walked the domestic title for the second year in a row. But um, yeah, it's nice, and uh, yeah, look, looking forward to that. I mean, there's 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 new. Uh, I mentioned the defence there, but there's new faces right across the squad. I mean, um, you've got the you've got the the Siren sisters or twins, are they in the um, in the midfield? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's there's new faces right across that midfield. You got you got some of the, our, our our old familiar faces as well. I mean, Rhea Erling, she's in there. She's just picked up a, a second um, a second Damol Svenskan title in a row with FC Rosengård. So, um, so yeah, that's, she's um, she's come out top of the league there, and they they've won the championship there in Sweden. Um, yeah, Evelina Sundmanen, she's in there as you would expect. You know, played playing for Tottenham in England now in the WSL, who who smashed Brighton eight nil um, at the weekend. Tinny was uh, Tinny was in goals there. Not not much not much for her to do. She had a bit of a bit of a day off, but it was all the action was down the other end. But um, but yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's 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 a good looking squad. The only the only one that I, I would say is Amanda Rantanen misses out. She's she's not in there, and she's been she's been playing. I mean, um, she's been playing for yeah Oreba in in Sweden, pitching in with with assists and goals. So, but um, I guess it's just you know a bit of bit of squad rotation for these these games. Yeah, and uh, and I will be sort of highlighting that on the. Uh... The various social medias will be will be following that, and uh, I guess we'll uh, might be a, a good excuse to share a couple of the interviews we've done over the yeah. uh, 
so, some of those players we we've spoken to. And I know you spoke to a couple um, during the Euros when you went to the uh, the training camp. So it'll be uh, nice to follow them. And um, yeah, a week or so later, the uh, the hooky at the men's team sort of get in on the action. And um, yeah, we haven't had the squad yet. I think that's coming next Tuesday. The uh, the squad announcement. But um, yeah, we've got two games against uh, North Macedonia. Uh, and Oz, uh, Norway in Oslo, Norway, yeah. just before the World Cup. So, uh, Ali, you've got your Finland shirt on. Uh, any hopes and dreams for these qualifiers against the almighty opponents? Um, well, I think the, the North Macedonia game, I mean, that should be uh, a nice little... Well, I mean, you never know. With a team like Macedonia, they did, they did qualify for, um, for the Euros, didn't they? And and you know, put up a, a fight in at least two of those games, if my memory serves me correctly. Um, and then against Norway, I don't know, it'd be quite nice if uh, we could stop that tall robot that plays for Man City. <laughs> yeah. Him out. Maybe yeah, Radetzky does another fantastic last minute penalty like he did the other week against uh, Atletico Madrid. Um, I, I, I think on paper, Finland need to be looking at, you know, probably beating North Macedonia and then a, a draw against Norway away wouldn't be a bad result at all. No, mate, you're right, mate. You don't, you don't want to, I mean, nor you got, you got to say that Norway are probably um, a step ahead of us in their, in their quality and obviously their, their development as a football nation as well. But, um, but yeah, you just, if, if you're going to go there, you just don't want to get your ass kicked there. You? you know what I mean? It's, you got to, you got to sort of, I mean, we all know we all know their strengths. Everyone knows Erling Haaland, you know what I mean. But it's just uh, how you sort of cope with that. Um, when we were when we were in where was I? When I was in Montenegro, we watched the um, we actually watched the uh, the, the Serbia Norway game, and um, and Serbia came away with the points there. So um, you know, it's uh, they're, they're they're not unbeatable, you know what I mean. So um, yeah, got to uh, got to go there and give it a go. Yeah, my, my, my very few uh, contacts that I have in, in Norway are quite frustrated at that Norway aren't as good as they probably should be. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, with, you know, Holland, Erdegaard, um, Alexander Soloff, who I'm sure will play against Man United tomorrow for, for Sociedad. You know, that's quite a good forward line and they haven't really been in danger of of winning a group, qualifying for a, a major tournament. So that's definitely the next step um, that they need to make. And I think that would be a really good, good test because I think Norway are probably a, a solid, you know, pot number two team in Sorry, Europe. Yeah. So, um, so it'll be a really good uh, test again away as well. So makes it that little bit trickier. It does. Um, it does make me wonder. Well, you know, especially for these these friendlies, how um, how do these oppositions get selected? Do you know what I mean? Is it just is it just like uh, well, Norway's just around a corner. Yeah, North Macedonia. They look, they look like them. But I just give them a call and say, do you, I don't know how it works. I, I guess with the the World Cup because the World Cup kicks off the same day as Finland and Norway. Um, so I, I assume. It's an international break, and it's that kind of scratch. They've probably got a WhatsApp group, haven't they? It's like, oh, yeah, who's my not local, qualified? Yeah, it's like my local five aside. It's like, oh, who's available? Oh, and then someone bring a ball. Um, but weird, it's a, it's a weird one again, you know. Um, I can't, we haven't played Norway for, for a while now, have we? But uh, yeah, and, and you wonder again with politics behind the scenes and everything, uh, Finland, Norway, Sweden, and Denmark have submitted a joint bid to host the next women's Euros. So I do wonder if, you know, there's that kind of stuff in there as well. Who knows? Horse trading and all that is probably absolute rubbish. And there was a meeting in a sauna somewhere and that was how it was decided. Because that's how Finnish football works. Do you remember, do you remember though, um, like, if uh, when, when England qualified for a tournament, like, they would always try and play someone <laughs> in a friendly who was almost the country who they would be playing. I mean, like, you know, we've got, we've obviously got Denmark in the next set of qualifiers for the Euros. Is that why we've chosen Norway for these <laughs> friendlies? And we've also got Kazakhstan and North Macedonia don't sound too far away from that, does it? <laughs> well, they get the map out quick. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. 
But um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what what kind of squad uh, Rivo picks. That that announcement's yep. on uh, on Tuesday, so that'll be on uh, on our socials, and we'll we'll have a little natter about that. It'll be interesting to see, I guess the the Vegas League of players or, or those uh, coming. They're probably in their downtime at the end of the season now, so I don't know. Obviously, we've had some some retirements. Um, it's been quite a lot of retirements, sort of domestically. I mean, we'll go into that shortly, but. Um, yeah, but a lot of players who, who've sort of packed their boots up um, this winter, and you kind of think now with those games about a month after the Vegas League is finished, will will some of them really be be considered for selection? But um, yeah, be uh, be fun to see. It, it, it's a really weird time to be playing two friendlies whilst also knowing that there's a World Cup happening that you're not part of. I I, I do. I mean, I'm I'm not just saying this so that you know. If the results don't go our way in a month's time, um, you know, I don't get too upset about it. <laughs> but I, I, I wouldn't read too much into these results. I, I, I think it's going to be a lot of experimenting, chopping and changing, maybe giving some debuts uh, to some of the younger players, um, which will still be, you know, a worthy, you know, week, yeah. 10 days as a, as a training camp. But um, yeah. Uh, but ask me again when we win five 0 in both games, I might change my change my answer. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is they're just essentially bringing forward those January January fixtures we we had up until quite recently, and obviously mm. they would have gone to Qatar or something like that. But Qatar appears to be busy over the next uh, four yeah. to six weeks with uh, at, like lesser football. That's it. You know I mean? Yes. Well, let's not worry about that. Um, but um, as as Ali mentioned um, earlier, Lukas Chodetsky has been in action for uh, by Leverkusen and uh, hitting the headlines for mostly good reasons. Uh, Keke, you were following and uh, sharing a little bit about his exploits last night. Yeah, so, um, yeah, by Leverkusen, by Leverkusen hopped into uh, third place in their, in, their, in their European group yesterday, which means that they, um, they, don't, they don't carry on in the, in the Champions League, but they drop into the Europa League. So um, they will continue... European football after Christmas, um, in no small part thanks to Lukas Radetzky, who, uh, who kept a clean sheet yesterday for their their nil nil with um, with Club Bruges. But also, as Ali touched on earlier, that that last minute penalty saved against um, Atletico Madrid last week. So um, so yeah, I mean they've they've had a they've had a pretty indifferent season, old Leverkusen. They've um, they've changed the uh, change manager and um, they're they're certainly won't be enjoying their position in the Bundesliga at the moment, but they seem to be seem to be pulling things together. And, and as I say, they, they will continue in European competition after, uh, after the World Cup. So, yeah, good on you. Look at it. Yeah, because I think um, the, the third place teams, they go into like a playoff round against the teams that come second, I think, in the Europa League groups. Oh, That's right, God, yeah. It's so complicated these days, isn't it? Um, <laughs> And again, like being an Arsenal fan and, and Arsenal being top of their Europa League group, but they need to win and all that. It's like, God, just keep it simple. Keep it, 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 simple. Mean, it means two extra games. And yes. uh, of course, we, we, we need extra games. Uh, of course, this, everyone this needs them. So, uh, yeah. There's a big incentive there. Um, yeah. I, I haven't been following the Champions League as much because I don't have the, uh, the, the channels legitimately. Um, <laughs> Rangers lost again uh, to Ajax. Does that are they they out now? Very, very, very much yeah. so. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Very. Couldn't be more out. Actually. Yeah, they could not be. Yeah. <laughs> they, they yeah. are now they are now statistically the worst Champions League side ever. Oh, yeah. Zero, zero points and a minus twenty goal difference. I believe. Are they, are they I the my notes, oh, yeah, so I'm just ripping off that. But it's that, about yeah. That. Yeah. yeah, it's uh, it's not been it's not been pretty. Yeah, so uh, Glenn, Glenn Kamara's Rangers uh, go out uh, in a blaze of spectacular glory. Um, and, and I think they were the only two Finns in the Champions League, weren't they? But, yeah. Um, yeah, but, and uh, there's still a, f- a few dotted around doing doing bits and bobs. But um, any other sort of Finns doing well in the uh, Europe? Well, the talking, about, talking about Finns in Europe, last week we had um, we had eight, eight Finns gracing the... Uh, the Europa Conference Leagues and uh, and and the what was the other one? The other one was the Women's Champions League, 
with um, yeah their their whistling skills. There was um, yeah the Arsenal versus FC Zurich Women's Champions League game was uh, was officiated by a team of of Finns, and um, the West Ham game yeah the West Ham Europa Conference League game was also uh, officiated by a by a team of um, by a Finnish ref and his his assistants etc. So. Um, yeah, they've uh, been making making a big splash in the in the European game, mate. It's all happening. And um, T- Tamer Puki got an assist for Norwich at the weekend. I saw. Did you see Marcus Force scored? I, do you know what? Well, I, 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 I haven't the well, forgotten I, man. Yeah, I have. I mean, he, I feel so sorry for Marcus Force. I mean, yeah. he's he joined. He left Brentford to join Middlesbrough. Sort of. They had um, Chris Wilder was there at the time, I think. And um, and everyone was sort of backing them to be up there and there or thereabouts in the in the championship, and I, they're they're like they're like they're in the relegation zone or whatever. They've mm. they've had an absolutely shocking season. Oh, Chris, tell you what, no, I misread that. No, he didn't. <laughs> After all yeah, that. there you go. But um, yeah, it doesn't and it doesn't surprise me because mm. um, they honestly, I feel so sorry for him. He's he's obviously chanced his arm, joined a club where he thought he was going to get minutes and have a chance of, of uh, banging in a few goals and it just hasn't really gone to plan for the club or for or for him. So, I mean, I don't think, I don't think Wilder's there anymore. They, they've, they've, appointed, yeah, um, yeah. they've appointed Michael Carrick, haven't they? Mm. So, yeah, remains to be seen what, what he thinks of our boy Marcus and hopefully, hopefully Michael Carrick can turn things around. But, yeah, going back to players who, who, are, who are doing well, um, Richard Jensen, sorry, Freddie Jensen, provided an assist for uh, for the Augsburg's goal the other day. But when I um, when I checked checked on the stats, it looked like he had provided the assist from from right back position. So um, I don't quite know what's going on there. But um, but yeah, he's getting minutes and uh, and putting the balls in the right areas. But yeah, it looked it. See, I don't know if that was a a mishap on on the on the the, the app I was using. But yeah, they had. They had Freddie Rett Jensen Tanner's right back. Yeah, we had. Um, I, I've, I've checked this properly with our thanks to our, our friends at Buru. Um, yeah, goals for Oni Valakari, Chalman, Soisalo, uh, Danny Hataka, who's now playing in Iceland. Mm-hmm. He got a goal at the weekend. And yeah, assists for Jensen, Rasmus Schola, and Tamo Puki. So there we go. Yeah, oh. yeah ben, go, I go mean, follow them. Benjamin Chalman, he's doing, he's doing well in Poland. I mean, he, um, that game at the weekend, he had, he had a before his headed goal, he had a he had a cracking shot that went just wide, and um, yeah, he's sort of leading the line over there for for Krakowia and yeah, getting getting goals. So, well, I'm sure we'll uh, we'll see him in the in the in the Hukiat squad. Yeah, I think that that game in uh, in Montenegro, he uh, and and, and the <laughs> game before that as well, he, he looked like he'd been watching those old Ronaldo videos from his time at Barcelona on YouTube. Yeah, he was a uh, really stepped up in those two games. So, uh, yeah, I imagine he'll be, assuming he's allowed to go, uh, I don't know how this fixture calendar works anymore, but, um, yeah, assuming uh, he's in the squad for the next Finland game, hopefully he'll get some minutes. Um, Right, I guess as we're winding up, uh, do we have any other business sort of thing? Uh, Any other news or snippets that have caught your eye? Uh, Crikey. I think I'm just about just about done mate to be honest there's mm. um yeah i don't I've, I've mentioned mentioned the girls who have picked up their championship medals mentioned toyo who's um who's retired i think yeah i think that's about me yeah so uh, to you uh, <laughs> this is how weird football is these days she popped up on my linkedin the other day as looking for work in the sports science field because that is where her uh, her degree and uh, profession <laughs> professional is <laughs> So yeah, l- looking for employment in the sports science field and, and hoping for any recommendations. So if anyone's looking for a, a sports scientist with five Serie A championship medals, then uh, she's your girl. Yeah, quality. Yeah. Um, and also today we saw the uh, the retirements of two Vegas League of veterans uh, in their forties, which makes me feel better. Um, Aciola Rafinha, he's retired at the age of forty, um, <laughs> retired from professional football anyway. He says he's going to carry on playing. At a lower level, and uh, lefty goalkeeper Reguero, I think might be forty-one. Uh, wow. It was yeah, which explains a lot about Lati. Uh, he's uh, he's also packed his gloves in. I think he might be staying there as a goalkeeping coach. So uh, yes, 
where old players go and I think I can still get a game if I take my boots over next time. So uh, anyway, well, I guess we'll try and do something around the uh, the Hukiat games in the yep. next couple of weeks. I think it's only fair we should try and, you know, the, every podcast, every football podcast is going to be shoehorning in something around the World Cup, aren't they? So uh, let's join in on the action for a bit of Finland yeah. Norway, something like that. That's it. And yeah, we'll keep an eye on the, the Helmerit games as well and let you know what's going on now. Yeah. So uh, say follow us on the uh, on the Instagram, the Facebook. Uh, I'm at Escape to Swarmy on Twitter. Keke? I'm at Keke Mulleri on Twitter. And Ali, you are? I'm at Mano99. Yeah, we need to up your finished football output. Now this uh, what you're doing in your real life. <laughs> yeah. We we we, we, got, we gave a retweet earlier, so I like Anna retweet. So yeah, double whammy earlier. So I, I, I've started from today. Nice. <laughs> and um, and yeah, so um, we're on the the YouTube channel. So like and subscribe on your podcast app of choice. It all helps. Uh, leave a, a nice rating or review. I think even yes, on Spotify, please. Spotify you can leave reviews on or, or ratings on now. So uh, if you listen on Spotify, give us five stars. One for each of the stars on this Holly Cross shirt, although I think there might only be three because it was uh, an old one before they put the five on. <laughs> so, and they just shoved Malik's name on the back because yeah. Holly Cross got their 99 they saw you euros, coming. They? they did. They did sell me an old tea towel as well or something like that. But, uh, anyway, gents, been a pleasure as always. Yo, kitos, kitos. Kitos, say hey. Moi, moi. You've been listening to the Finnish Football Show. You can find us online at finishfootballshow.com. Remember to subscribe to the show wherever you're listening or watching. You can follow the Finnish Football Show page and group on Facebook and on Instagram. See the links in the episode description below. You can also connect with the four hosts on Twitter at Explore Finland, at FC Sormi, at Escape to Sormi, at Kekimula. Links to the Finnish Football Show merch stores are also in the episode description.